let's get into the nice juicy topics that we got here to talk about because there's so much to get into that i want to kind of run through number one number one number one on the list i'm not sure if i mentioned this previously or if it came up in another podcast but um there's an interesting documentary coming up that uh, a few people are putting together that concentrates on the berlin bouncer um, as you guys know, I am absolutely infatuated with Berlin. It's my kind of spiritual home. I think as the more I've grown up, the more I've started to realize, the more the more I've grown up and the more I've kind of matured and started to maybe realize that um, I was maybe chasing fun instead of kind of allowing fun to come to me or being present in the fun that I was currently in. So maybe uh, Berlin isn't as um, as much of a prize as it was for me in the past. I think the last couple of trips I went to Berlin, I kind of realized quite quickly that I can do the same thing in Berlin I can do here in London. Obviously not to the same sort of degree, obviously not to the same sort of level of kind of carefreeness, obviously to the same sort of level of spontaneity, but the similar sort of elements kind of run through in London. But um, essentially what you have to do is kind of allow yourself to be present and not be kind of, you know, infatuated with what you're missing out on or or kind of comparing it to another place. You just got to be like love, loving it for what it is. It's sort of like when you go to... Uh, Weatherspoons, or you go to like a random shitty pub somewhere or a shitty bar in a random town and you have the best time ever why it's because you're allowing yourself to be present in that moment with wherever you're with and really enjoying the ambience and whatever happens happens so i've kind of had the same sort of realization with berlin but still you know there's aspects about berlin especially if you're if you're found in that life like i am and you love underground music and you love uh club culture then you just can't ignore it. You can't help but ignore just how um, just how on point Berlin has everything when it comes to club culture, right? They've just got it. They've got it figured out from the fact that the government helps clubs uh, in uh, soundproof their clubs so it can you know so they can stay around the residential areas. From the fact that the government works hand in hand in making sure the clubs are safe environments to the fact that the clubs take an active responsibility or active role in ensuring that they have the right kind of people in their clubs by having pickers or by having bouncers that know the people, right people to come in there they get everything completely spot on when it comes to um club culture and none more so than the aspect of bouncers right um if you're if you're familiar with the bouncers in london bouncers in london usually kind of are de facto security guards by the most part right they don't really that well they're bouncers by their conventional sense right they're basically there to kind of maintain the peace so if anyone gets too rowdy they chuck them out if someone's too drunk they don't let them in but that's about their remit where it stops right but for the most part it's not really their fault the bouncers but you know with the with the kind of draconian licensing laws we have and the fact that most bars and clubs have to shut before 2 or 3 a.m it means that um for the most part people come out or to have a good and, and plus added it added add to the fact that most people in, in the uk start drinking very early on in the evening because you know they want to get their bang for their buck it adds to a very um temperamental and a very unpredictable clubbing landscape right so on any given night you might be in a club full of like you know really heavily intoxicated people another time it might be completely quiet but bar owners and bar managers and whatever they may be cannot afford to have people not in their bar not paying an entrance fee not paying six pound for a pint so what ends up happening is that bouncers and cup door pickers end up being a lot more lenient on the door and letting more people in because they don't have that much time left in order to kind of get their money into the till which then leads to a very dysfunctional dance floor and leads to a very questionable um, actions happening on the dance floor whether it's people getting sexually assaulted whether people getting involved in fights whether it's people getting pickpocketed just because the doors are open and everyone kind of allowed and if you have money it kind of fucks it up whereas berlin the other side they don't have any of that they don't have the they don't have the table service culture that we maybe have a little bit in the uk which is not really prevalent anymore for the most part but they don't really have that table service culture at all in berlin so because of that they have a they don't and because they have such a uh, long opening hours most bars and clubs most standard bars like you know the bars you see in shoreditch and dawson they close at four all of the standard kind of like you know quintessential kind of trendy bars that are in kreuzberg they close at 4 a.m and then the other bars that are just like five minutes up the road or a little bit you know underground they can go on for as long as 10 in the morning sometimes even one right so they can go on as long as they want to so what you're seeing is that there's a less um, proclivity to kind of go out and get super smashed because you know you're going to be out until four having a chat with your friend in a nice um, dimly lit pot, uh, bar somewhere in the middle of in the middle of uh, Berlin with some cool furniture on it and shit like that and also the bouncers and the door pickers take an active responsibility to ensure they have the right people in their club like if you have money in Berlin you, it doesn't mean you're going to get in just because you can pay the entry fee doesn't mean they're going to let you in you just have to demo you have to kind of it's weird how you have to you kind of have to somehow showcase that you kind of get it 
and they kind of have to feel that you're going to get it when you go in there. And what ends up happening is that people inside end up kind of having a safe space where they can really party, really let their hair down, really have a good time. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that a lot of the clubs founded in Berlin are kind of come from the gay culture scene and the gay culture scene has kind of, you know, they've been kind of targeted with violence in some cities it may be. So they might take a bit more care in ensuring that their patrons who kind of establish the club are in a safe environment. Maybe it has to do with the fact that a lot of the clubs are working hand in hand with the government and they don't want to fuck it up. So they can't allow any chances. They can't allow like a group of like seven guys to come in and have a tear up but whatever it is whatever the reasons may be the end product is when you go into most bars and clubs in berlin especially the good ones it's nine times out of ten you're gonna have a good time like nine times out of ten you're gonna have a great fucking time um the people that go in there are already very appreciative of getting let in because obviously there's a there's like a barrier of entry right there's like a it's like 50 50 of whether you're gonna get in or not so when you do get in you're gonna be in your best behavior the responsibility to be kind of like um to have all your you know to have all your senses in order not to be too fucked up is with you too you can't allow yourself to get too fucked up in a nightclub because you know they're going to remember and not going to let you in again there's a lot of like social responsibility around the people around you they make sure they look after you i've seen plenty of times i've been in berlin clubs where a guy or a girl has got a bit too crazy or got a bit too fucked up and there's been a random guy or girl in there kind of helping them out uh, running them through processes or there might be someone on site there that can help with with um, uh, harm reduction and all that sort of stuff like really great culture and all to, all to do with it but like I said the epicenter the people that are kind of at the mainstay and they're important and that kind of really um, hold the places together are the bouncers and they've got this amazing documentary which I'm going to play here uh, this documentary is going to come out very soon. Um, it's an article here featured on Electronic Beats. I'm going to quickly read through it. The article so it says here, da, 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 da. a new documentary directed by David Diet seeks to go deeper into the lives and histories or in working practices of three of Germany's capital's most famous doorman. Berlin bouncers tell the story of Sven from Ber Bergheim, as we know, uh, Smiley Baldwin, but both of whom have been working at Bergheim, as well as uh, Frank Kunster, who uh, is in the 90s worked at the Delicious Donuts. Uh, the film details each figure's passion to club culture with their varied origins. Um, Baldwin was an American GI guard in the Berlin border. Kunster sought out the capital in the West. And uh, Sven von Bergheim was a budder photographer. And I think, I think it was before I went to... Now, I think the pictures have got taken down. I remember I went to Berlin. I went to Bergheim a couple... Uh, I've said Berlin. Uh, <laughs> people say but I went to Bergheim a couple years ago. And I remember there being massive posters on the, on the stairs as you go up of all the people that work at Bergheim and the pictures were taken by Sven, like crazy pictures of them holding like these flame things in their hands. It was fucking cool. But anyway, let's quickly watch this trailer for this documentary. It's called uh, Berlin Bouncer Trailer and it's going to come out on February the 10th, 11th and 16th as part of the Berlin Biani, uh, the Berlin Biani Film Festival and then it's going to have a wide release on April. So I'm hoping, hoping some venues in London um, be able to screen this and if i if not i'm going to try and get in contact with the guys myself and see if i can get it screened in a bar or a club somewhere around here but let's quickly play this and get it on it's not possible that is not possible. Oh, it's got, you've got some bums in a way, but that is not possible. Is a fucking quintessential uh, Berlin response in it, right? How many times have you been to Berlin and you heard someone say it's not possible? Not tonight. Like, ah. But again, like I said, it's so cool because the next time you come around, you got your shit in order, right? If you have to fucking dress up to get in, if you have to make sure you don't drink anything to get in, like that's the most sober and the most clear headed I've been clubbing and I had the best time and I remembered all the sets who played. You know sometimes you go out in London and you go to a bar or a club or a nightclub and you go to hear a DJ play you don't even remember who the fuck it was, right? Because you got so hammered beforehand. Every time I've been to Berlin, whoever I've seen, I've remembered their set. I've remembered even songs they fucking play. That's how, you know what I mean? Because already when before you go to these bars and clubs, you you, you want to get in. So the last thing you're going to do is fucking pre-drink till your eyes go red. You're going to kind of get yourself in, in state. You're going to be calm, be chilled. Plus, after you've been a few times, you don't want to be the guy walking on the street holding a, a bottle of beer. It's a little bit cliche. You want to go in, you want, you want to walk around and, and look like you're a fucking local, even though you're not. And you stick out like a sore thumb. But still, you're on your best behavior before you get in. And then you're just hoping, hoping you don't get not tonight. Or it's not possible. But anyway, let's continue. <laughs> Man malt jeden Abend ein Bild. Ist es dann gelungen, dass alle beim Losgehen sagten, geile Leute, geile Mucke, geile Leute? No idea what they're saying, but you know, Frank Kunz. Wirklich ein absurder Beruf. Ich bin Exzessbetreuer und deshalb I think that's schenken wir den Menschen positive Aufmerksamkeit. War das awesome. Also ich vermeide es, diese steife, trockene Ausübung oh, von diesem Job. Oh, Roses, 
this is my favorite one of my favorite bars and clubs in berlin it's called roses i think it's i think it's in kreuzberg it's amazing it's a really like like most uh bars and clubs in berlin it's a bit kitschy but is it, is it i'm sure it's called roses i'm sure it's roses but it's a bit um kitschy let me see if i can quickly get it up on here it's a bit kitschy and it's got like a uh, felt pink interior on the inside um and loads of weird kind of accoutrements everywhere berlin bar let's see is it roses i'm sure it's roses right is it roses yeah roses that's the one yeah it's roses it's in i don't even know what that era is called actually i'm not even going to pronounce her name but yeah it's a bar called roses it's a it's a supposedly meant to be a gay bar but the times i've been in there i've not had they don't really have details or anything playing in there but you know it's a pretty cool kitschy bar one ro- one small door uh stairs leading up to it the entirety of the club's interior is kind of pink fur felt kind of vibe um is it is it kreisberg it is kreisberg right the area is it kreisberg it's near kind of alexander platz or oh, Kotbasator, sorry. It's near Kotbasator. So that kind of area. I'm not sure that's close, but I think that's another area. But anyway, yeah. So that area, it's, it's near Kotbasator Station. It's a really cool bar. Um, It's got a tiny bar. It's got a tiny bar actually inside it. Most of it's kind of made up of tables and chairs everywhere with loads of little weird uh, mobiles hanging down from the ceiling. It's one of my favorite places to go. It's the kind of place that you go to if you just want to come and go there and meet randoms. So especially times I've been there on my own. It's p- best time to kind of meet some strangers to go out and party with later. And, you know, Berlin's the best place to kind of meet strangers to go out have a good time. So, um, dass die Jungs, die sollten halt Spaß haben bei der Arbeit. Du bist die oberste Legalität. Besten Fall hat der, der so, oder der Zeit, der der Poche irgendwie Spuren hinterlassen oder Leute geprägt und ein Lebensgefühl ausgemacht. Ich glaube, alle oder jeder, den es betraf, muss erst mal lernen, was Freiheit überhaupt auch bedeuten kann. Und die Leute haben diese Plätze besetzt, diese Häuser besetzt. Und Looks das like it'll be heavy on the history too. Lots of stuff about the das Berlin Wall, which was great. Hat. Clubszene eingetaucht und es waren so Orte, die wow. ich als total wieder Das looks fucking cool, man. I can't wait. Ich wusste schon zwei Wochen, nachdem ich in Berlin war, da stimmt irgendwas. Und daneben, dass halt so viele interessante Menschen sich da treffen. Oh, yes. Ich finde es ganz großartig, dass immer wieder neue Läden aufmachen. Ich finde es genauso tragisch, dass andere wieder zumachen, aber auch das gehört irgendwie mit dazu. Uh, that, that looked quite cool, a t-shirt, wouldn't it? That Berlin Bouncer yeah. on the t-shirt. That looked pretty cool. Then come I in so a Hieronymus Bosch Zwischenhölle, <laughs> where I always hear something. That's when they're in. And they say, no, you don't. No. He loves a bit of knee, doesn't he? Fucking fucking today he loves a bit of knee but yeah that looks really cool and it's just awesome really to see isn't it right imagine being a bouncer in berlin as a whole career you end up being this famous dude on the internet someone like me speaks about you for fucking 10 minutes right that's an amazing thing isn't it it's that's what that, that's that's the thing as well i wish london would do because it's such a as expensive as a city as it is i think you can't complain like even this place i'm djing at the weekend the jago it's a really cool like you know little alternative space it's kind of you know african caribbean influence it's a bit different in terms of programming it doesn't really have the same views every other place it has there's so many different spots you can find everywhere there's indie spots there's metal spots but it's just the fact that we have so many limits on where clubs can open how long they can open for and the industry isn't taken as seriously as it should be taken right it contributes so much to the overall kind of um what what do you call it the overall um, revenue of a city right nightlife culture nightlife economy but it's not respected as, as it should be and in berlin it seems like it's really respected it's an actual industry where bouncers can actually have a that can be their career right where if you're i'm assuming if you're a really well-known bartender you can probably have a great career in um or you're a great barman or a bar woman working in berlin you can have a great career too you can probably move around from clubs to clubs there's bars all over the city you can work at like you can actually make good money and have a career doing the thing that you love working in the industry that you really love and appreciate and of course the cost of living in berlin isn't high either so you know for the most part you can probably get away with working three days a week or four days a week and you know and just living like a rat probably and just still having a, a good life and you know we don't really have that same thing here which is a bit um annoying a bit concerning and again like i said uh bouncers here in london have their workload is fucking insane man they're having to fucking break up fights, you know, make sure girls are not getting assaulted and shit. It's insane. And that all because, you know, there's so many, it's too open. Like you can allow anyone and anyone to come into bars and clubs. We've seen a bit of a different reaction with the promoters like Into the Woods, the Origins night that they, they do at Mixed Garage, which I'm a big fan of. They take a really um, 
they take a real big uh step responsibility to make sure the people inside the club are cool even the listings you go on facebook when they kind of put the events up they're always saying there's always a disclaimer there we have the right to refuse entry they've kind of seen that as great as it is to have your night be sold out have it full you'd much rather have the right people in there than have the wrong people in there but you know over time hopefully these kind of actions and these kind of um practices can kind of seep their way through to kind of cities like london and we can kind of maybe see a bit more of a sea change in the kind of overall clubbing culture but that documentary looks fucking awesome and i can't wait to check it out uh, like i said berlin bouncer it's going to be due out on february the 10th 11th 16th uh, as part of the berlin Bilani. if you're there but then i think it's going to come wider release on april and again if, it, if it's not featured or if it's not done if no one in london does it and i don't see listings i'm going to contact the people that are making a film and see if i can get it uh screened somewhere um, and I'll be pretty cool, I reckon, doing that on my...